Welcome back to the Eric Crown Crypto Channel. Wishing you a happy early start to this Tuesday morning over here as we get ready to wrap up this month of November and head into December. We still got one more day left, one more day left of trading, but I wanted to go over some very higher term time frame ideas and then thread it into the lower term time frames as well as well. Very little has actually been happening in the last uh, in the last few days. Anyways, we still got the uh, the blacks. Not the block sale, the Black Friday sale going on right here. Sorry, BLM, not trying to uh, poke any any uh, any hornet's nest, I guess. But in this case, I should let you know. Please do not FOMO into any one of the programs. I would humbly request that you do watch the promotional videos if you're interested in any one of the programs or indicators, as they're going to explain who they're for, who they're not for, what essentially to expect inside of it. Um, one thing I do want to make a note of, however, is for the people in the Quant Project, um, there's been, well, a ton of new videos uploaded in the live trade section. One of them is a particular interest that was uh, done this morning, which was the um, strategy number four, optimization for entry. Uh, it's a very short video, but I do think that it'll address um, just something that is probably going to be valuable. Um, anyways, yes, so let's just jump right on into it. Let's go into the first chart of the day, the monthly for Bitcoin here. As always, when it comes to the end of the month, I'm looking at the accumulation and distribution indicator chart because it gives us kind of an insight as to where we are on the macro scale. Is it time to be looking at this as more of a low or not? Or is it time to be looking at this as, you know, the changing tides? And in this case, a few things of interest here. So first and foremost, what I care most about with this indicator when um, talking about macro shifts in direction is the actual slope of, of the indicator itself. As you can see right now, it is to the downside. Anytime that we've seen a slope change in the extreme red or green zones, that's correlated to a change in macro direction within like the next, um, I'd say one to three months, um, which gets a ton of fall through. I mean, a, a shit ton of fall through. Uh, but in this case right here, you can see that right now it is to the downside. And if we do get a positive slope, that would be the next sort of major indication that we're probably, we're, we've probably seen the low or we're so close to the low where it's like, hey, uh, you know, you might see a move down to like 13,000 bucks or so, but ultimately it's like, hey, you might see a move down to like 2,000 bucks, but we're pretty close. Um, here's the thing, it's 69 to, uh, to, to 15 thus far. What's another 2,000, baby? What's another 10,000, in fact? Um, no, but in a more serious tone, uh, you know, if we do start to see this slip, uh, uh, go to the upside, that's at the point where I'd really start to be looking at, you know, anything around here is good enough, basically, for the long term. You can obviously backtest this yourself when the slope change um, happens. Usually the low is actually already in. The low is actually already in um, as of like, uh, you know, two to three, yeah, about two to three months um, prior to that. Um, but on a closing basis, very, 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 very close still. Anyways, the next thing that I want to bring up about this is that uh, we are also hitting this regression of a trend line going back to uh, the major lows of the 2014-2015 saga over here. And then also, we have seen a major correction, which is very much in alignment with what we have seen uh, in the past as far as what to expect coming off of these macro corrections. So let me explain this next part um, and explain uh, which kind of gives us insight as to you know where a macro low might be and if there is going to be continuation where that might be as well. But basically, um, what I've done here is I've measured from when the indicator itself goes from red to green. Or sorry, it, well, from green to red, actually, is what I mean to say. Dyslexia, again, biting me in the bunghole here. Uh, but for example, this would be right here in January of 2020. Now, I measured from that part to the next major low. So in this case, here's the change, here's the next major low, and you can see that that was a 62.5% correct, uh, corrective phase. I've gone through all the prior cycles with this, and there's actually been some good, uh, some, I wouldn't say agreement, but some good data derived from that. Keep in mind, we only have four prior ones, so it's not perfect. I mean, obviously, we'd like a lot more than that, but it's the best we can do, unfortunately, with the data that we have. So in this case, I've calculated that uh, the average correction from that time has led to about a 61 spot, 3-4% move, and if we were to create a first standard deviation, that'd give us a range basically from 56 all the way up to almost 67. So here's here's what's interesting about this. We've actually already seen the average hit. Uh, we've seen thus far a, correct, a correction of 61 spot 63 from when the indicator turned red over here in May to where we are currently at uh, in November on the current lows. So, you know, historically speaking, Bitcoin's very, 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 very likely to be closer to a major low than not. Um, and uh, and of course, if we were to see another leg down, I'd look somewhere closer to the top side of the first standard deviation, which would be 66 spot 80. 
you already know where I'm going with this. You've been on this channel for you know any short amount of time at this point. Uh, but 6680 would put Bitcoin basically in the um, yeah, in like the thirteen thousand dollar range or so. You know, give or take about two fifty to five hundred bucks from that number. Um, so again, you know, these are these are extremes here, um, but we are starting to witness at least in my opinion, um, you know, if you're very long-term minded, it's like, how, how cute do you want to get with things? That's a, that's a question for you to answer. Obviously, maybe you want to be the cutest, perhaps maybe you want to delete it later. Also, also possible as well. Uh, but in that case, you know, might be, might be of relevance to you. Anyways, I want to go through now the lower term timeframes and then we'll follow up very, very briefly on the higher term timeframes as well. Um, I'm working through the full explanations of things just because I, I think most people probably, probably pretty fucking bored with that by this point. But Going back over here to the six hour and the 12 hour that we were looking at yesterday for CME, again, extreme lows on volatility for both six and the, uh, and the 12. I do look at this as very likely to expand, maybe not today, but probably tomorrow. Um, meaning that, you know, if you are looking at these moves, it's likely to play. Yeah, it might happen today, probably tomorrow. Wednesday typically is the most volatile day actually for Bitcoin in case um, in case you happen to give a fuck, I guess. Um, but we still, with the current price action, have the same setup as before. I mean, it's I, I know it's fucking boring. I know it's repetitive, but that just is what it is. And I can't really make up stuff that like doesn't actually exist on the charts, or at least I think that that would be like, that would keep me up at night. Like I wouldn't be able to stand by that. Anyways, in this case, we do have another drive of hidden bearish divergence on the four hour RSI setting up right here. It's actually hidden bullish divergence uh, setting up from yesterday's video. That's, I would say, already played out. Um, if you're in the quant program or the TA program, you kind of know what I'm thinking by this test on the 55 right here, ultimately. And of course, if there is going to be another local high confirmed in this case, that would just confirm another drive of hidden bearish divergence and probably beget another test back down to the bottom side of the range. So yesterday we saw um, a test down to 15,660 on CME. I'd say that's close enough in this case. If you're going to see another one down, probably somewhere around there, maybe another 100 to 200 bucks lower. Um, again, this is on CME. So there's a bit of a price discount compared to spot price action about, uh, looks like about 100 to 200 bucks as of right now. Six hour time frame, same thing. I mean, it's setting up for potentially another drive of hidden bearish divergence. Again, if you confirm a local high here, how would you confirm a local high? Closure below 16.1 or 16.150 if you want to be like super, uh, super, super exact. Um, for spot price action, what would the equivalent level be? Um, like 16.3 or 16.3, probably 16.3, I'd say I'd be a little more on the conservative side with it. Um, yeah, that probably doesn't. Maybe 16.350, depending upon your uh, your risk tolerance there. Um, 12 hour thing, uh, 12, 12 hour, same thing as well. Uh, same, same thing as well right here. So what does that mean on the other side? That does mean on the other side that the same sort of trap areas that we spoke about over the past couple we uh, weeks actually are still very much relevant. Um, anything below 17,000 bucks on CME is completely irrelevant for long term. Above 17,000 bucks, that's when I start to look for the next greater creative, uh, sorry, greater corrective bounce to occur, um, which probably brings things up uh, north of 18,000 and maybe even beyond from there as well. Um, and I do have a little bit of hoping with that as well, perhaps coming up here. Um, and then of course we should also go reference stochastic momentum, which I don't even have up here. So let's just uh, pop this one on, see if they agree uh, for today as well. That would make things a little bit more easy, I suspect. So let's go over here, boom, 12 hour. What are we looking at? Uh, 12 hour is actually up right now. 12 hour is gonna be remaining up as long as Bitcoin's above 16,000 bucks on CME, currently trading about 330 above there. So not bad. Six hour time frame, same pivot, 16,000 bucks. Um, and is going to be freshly turning up with the closure above there. Hour and uh, 28 minutes left to go. Four hour time frame is going to be up above basically 16,000 bucks again, uh, or 15,950. And then the hourly is probably going to be flippy floppy and down. And it is flippy floppy and down. And we'll stay down below 16,4. So short term, bit of a range, probably pulls back a little bit here. The question is on this pullback, do you start to see, you know, these critical regions? Um, uh, 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 violated, <laughs> you know, show me on the charts where the big nasty bear has touched you. Yes. Those bears. Um, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry. Someone's got to be fucking having fun today because it's been boring as all hell. Boring as all hell. We've been relegated. We've been relegated to 300 to $400 ranges. And now we get excited when we see a move like that. Oh man, I was back testing uh, price action from like literally 2021, like the heart, the heat of 2021 uh, yesterday night. And I was just, I was like crying over, oh my God, it's like, <laughs> it, was so, it was so much more forgiving. It was so much more easy. You know, you'd have like a, you'd have like an hourly range that would just be absolutely humongous. Um, 
Anyways, uh, yeah, so going back on over here, um, if you do see, you know, if you start to see Bitcoin, especially on CME, go below 16,000 bucks again, that's going to be a pretty damn good warning signal. Um, what did I say was the pivot over here? Uh, let's see. Um, I, th I probably said 16.1. That'd probably be close enough as well um, on a closing basis. So, you know, back below there, I look at this as a local high. Again, closing basis and very likely to be getting another test to the bottom side of the range. Um, as far as the higher term timeframes go, what's new? Well, we did close another two day time frame last night and Bitcoin did close above the pivot, I believe. I, I believe. It was 15,900. It closed about nine, 90 bucks above there. So definitely not emphatically. And you can see that that's represented on the chart over here. We're still not even really getting a real cross, certainly not a close of a closure for a cross. And what's very interesting about this is that the pivots has actually moved up on the two day time frame to 16,500 basically. So that is to say, um, as long as Bitcoin's below 16.5, I still look at this as risk to the downside, especially within this next like two to four day period, basically between now and the end of the week. Here's the thing though, and here's the hopium. If Bitcoin holds without, you know, closing on new lows by end of this week, the probabilities, these statistics will massively turn in favor of the Boo laws for putting in a, a much bigger bounce, um, a much, much bigger bounce. Um, but for right now, I'd say that it's still, it, you know, it's st still to the downside. Also, another chart that I actually haven't showed. Um, I haven't showed this chart since like June, probably. It's another two-day time frame chart. It's actually for spot price action, but not CME. Same sort of thing, basically. What I thought was interesting about this one is that we've actually already hit. Um, we, we've actually uh, already gotten extremely close to not just the average move. We've actually overshot it. Uh, but we've gotten uh, even closer to the top side of the first innovation here. So, and, and this one's also basically pivoted around the same days, which would put us like between, um, would actually put us like already there, in fact, uh, as far as the average days goes. Yeah. So in this case, that would suggest that, hey, uh, you should, it's, it's more likely to be looking for a bounce right here um you know on the higher term time frames but the question is do the lower term time frames give way first if they do all of that goes out the window i would be looking towards 13 to 13 5 or so with the bounce along the way of course not gonna all happen the same day or unlikely to happen the same day i would think uh, then again <laughs> always wrong on that um but uh but on the higher term time frames yes you know if things do basically uh hold on a closing basis above the current lows by end of this week, I'd say the probability is going to really start to turn in favor of a um, of a rally, probably somewhere around 18, maybe even a much greater rally than that. Definitely possible from here. Um, and of course, in the short term, if you do see that pop back above like 17 on CME, that'd be another damn good indication that you're going to see that that same thing happen. Um, and, and, and bulls will hold uh, before end of week. Until then, risk remains to the downside. Big eyes on the monthly, at least as far as I'm concerned. I think that's a great place we'll even, to be leaving off on this particular video. Um, I put out a video yesterday on Bybit's new... Uh, new exchange they have they have basically a decentralized exchange so it kind of takes care of the issue of like avoiding an ftx sort of situation um of course you know only if this is relevant to you it's uh, i understand that anytime you, you talk about exchanges people are going to call you shill but i do want to make sure that people who are looking for something like that you know you actually know that it's available to you liquidity is a great no still uh, still overshadowed by most centralized exchanges but it's decent and um yeah it's banned all, for all the all the regular countries as you would uh, as you would guess um so uh, so yeah that is a decision to, for you to make for yourself i'll have a link in the description below you also got bybit's regular promotion going on too but i don't need to mention that for right now because it is time to be leaving off on this video i want to i want to be wishing you the best best as always take care much love and see you hopefully soon